Hey y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. Okay, today we're gonna to talk about something that seems to be contentious, contentious to some people out there. And that is, lo and behold, what I think is the beloved black locust, this little sucker right here, you see that? Okay, a lot of people seem to think they're a pest. And in our reductionistic worldview in the Western world, we seem to think everything is a pest. It doesn't seem to fit within the matrix that we prepare for ourselves or that the so-called experts out there tell us, you know, it, it should be one way or the other. We don't necessarily see things in a holistic fashion. And honestly, I'm guilty as anybody else in that. And so it's been years now of trying to retrain my brain to stop thinking in a reductionistic fast fashion and look at things more holistically. And this little plant, because everybody's so frustrated with the barbs on it and all the other things, it becomes, a, it becomes something of a frustration to a lot of people, especially in grazing environments. Well, remember, in permaculture, for example, we don't, have a, we don't have a cricket problem. We don't have a grasshopper problem. We have a lack of turkeys problem. We don't have a, um, we don't have a black locust problem. We got maybe a lack of sheep problem because they will decimate this thing, especially when it's in this stage. It doesn't even matter. It could even be a honey locust. In fact, I got footage of these guys. The first thing they do when we let them out and they see a black locust, I don't care. We know what they love. This will be the first thing they go after every single time right out of the gates. They won't eat it all. They'll eat a piece of it and typical of sheep. They'll eat a piece. Go back, go hit another one, and then they'll come back. But I guarantee by day's end, this thing will be gone. Here you go. They just let out in the morning. All this stuff out here to eat. They're in the place where the compost pile was until we decided to put it around all the trees. And the first thing these sheep go after is what the one thing everybody seems to want to call invasive. And what is it? A black locust popping right up. So over here, we chopped down a black locust that was kind of, it wasn't where we wanted it to be. So we dropped it right about here. And it dropped a bunch of seeds and stuff out here. Well, a lot of people would think that's a problem. And folks, like I said, just kind of rethink some of these things everybody tells you is a problem, whether it's a honey locust, black locust. Go check out Renewed Homestead, where Denise there is actually doing like a series of videos talking about all these things that everybody tells you are weeds and they're not you know another example is you don't have a dandelion problem you have a compaction problem you have a lack of calcium problem see what i'm getting at here out there where we used to have all this goldenrod over here in the fields it wasn't a goldenrod problem it was a lack of sheep problem because they'll wipe it out and then when you see the succession of the things that come in behind it, you kind of learn through observation how all this stuff goes together. There's really few things out there that we see as invasive, except maybe I guess a pretty, a pretty comprehensive argument could be made for some of this Chinese silvergrass around here, but we found effective ways in even dealing with that. So we're trying to get out of that reductionistic mindset and into a holistic mindset. So that brings us to what we have here today. Now over in the orchard setting on this side, we've talked before about how every third tree is a nitrogen fixer. And for us, that could be a honey locust, black locust. Um, it could even be a uh, red bud. There's any number of trees that we could put out there. But I have areas down here where I need this black locust. And even if I didn't need it here, I wouldn't yank it out because its ability to come back repeatedly is its virtue. Think about all the things you can do with a black locust. I mean, whether it's your pole, posts out there, like Ben from uh, Renewed Homestead, he had a really good video about these black locust poles that were stuck down in the water at his, at his creek there, probably been there forever in the day, took them out, reused them to build a pretty awesome bee structure. So check them out too. But folks, not only can, is its hardness and its ability to be rot resistant, such a wonderful virtue, this thing has so many other awesome virtues. So, the virtue we're gonna to use today, the one we're gonna exploit, we're gonna dig this sucker out of here. Now it's summer, this ain't the best time to do it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Because if it's a fruit tree, it's a tree that I can't afford to lose, you know? So I'm gonna go through a lot of um, care and maintenance to make sure initially that it's the way it ought to be. 
this one, I got this one and a few more hanging around here that I'm going to dig up. You dig? And I'm going to take it down there. I'm going to put them within that succession where I need a black locust. And we'll show you how to do that. So right off the bat, I'm just going to take a little bit more of it. And it's okay. I'm going to leave some of those little root fibers. I'm just going to kind of loosen it up here. Do it there. Here. And then I'm going to take the whole thing out like that. Bam. It's a pretty good root ball. Do I need that much? No. I could take quite a bit of it and put it back. In fact, I'm just going to kind of shave that off just a little bit. Okay, I would have preferred to leave a little bit more of this thing. I probably should have left it in the root ball. This thing's real hard clay there, and it kind of busted up on me. Didn't quite go the way I wanted, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. Like I said, I can afford to lose these guys. We got this one down. I'm going to try to put everything back, and then we're going to go get a couple more. All right, y'all, I yanked up about three of them here. And in this slide, I got a, um, I got a peach. I'm not sure what cultivar there. And on the other side of here, I, I don't even know what that is right now, but that's not important. I know that every third tree has got to be a nitrogen fixer in this, in the way we set this thing up. And we'll keep it, we'll keep it trained. We'll keep it within the area, the footprint that we want. Now, here's where one was, and it didn't do so well. Um, for any number of reasons, I don't know why, but we need a nitrogen fixer right here. So I already have the beginnings of a mulch ring in here. Ain't much of that cardboard left. And there we go. Now, why am I gonna go through all the trouble of doing this, of taking a tree that seems like most of, a, most of the world, or at least in America, seems to think it's a, it's a junk tree? Folks, I had to cut one down the other day and William carved a fine spoon out of this thing. Um, there's so many different, I mean, think about it. You coppice it or cut it off at the base or pollard up high. You got firewood that's hotter than just about anything else you can find out there. Um, you got leaves that are awesome for your animals. You know, they'll, they'll eat this thing. Instead of concentrating on all the negative attributes of a plant, maybe think about how you can work with it, especially when it is an impossibility that you're going to eradicate it, nor should you. Even if you find one, maybe you're better off not just yanking it up out of the ground. Wouldn't you do better by, you know, as this thing gets bigger, when you chop it off, it'll self prune its roots, putting all of that benefit down into the soil. It, it'll be a benefit, a great benefit to the trees around it. Folks, we're missing the boat, a lot of us, by yanking this wonderful, wonderful tree out of the ground. In fact, if you want to learn, if you want to learn more about it, Check out Akiva Silver's book, Trees of Power. I mean, he's written an entire chapter on this wonderful, on this wonderful um, tree. So folks, there's tons of excellent opportunities you can have by working with something that everybody else tells you is invasive. It's not, just gotta work with it. That's what we do. We're trying to get out of that reductionistic worldview and bring ourselves once again into that holistic worldview because we find out honestly and i have to keep learning this over and over and over again and foolishly i shouldn't is that every time i move towards nature i take one step nature moves towards me every time i do something in a reductionistic way well nature's going to make you pay the piper for it so i'm going to try to get myself out of that thinking as best i can but it's a constant it's a constant battle. Okay, I got some of this cardboard that some dogs ripped up out of here. That's okay, I don't wanna get rid of it. I'm just gonna cover it up because the worms are gonna love that. And this is some of that, this rough compost that we got from the chicken tractor on steroids. Which by the way, y'all, we had, what was it, nine cubic yards sitting out there just in dressing these trees the other day. We used up a fair piece of it. All in preparation of getting ourselves to the point 
where we can get full steam ahead on that earth ship. But we're talking about black locust right now. And this baby is off and running. Michelle's down there watering some things she just planted. And um, she'll swing by and hit this. Now, another good benefit. This thing is a, I know I've talked about it tons, but there may be new people here. This thing is a nitrogen fixer, meaning that it's snatching all of that nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen, and putting it down into the soil, into these nitrogen fixing nodules. That is a great benefit once it intertwines with the leaves, or I'm sorry, the roots of the trees on each side, the fruit trees on each side, they get the benefit of that also. What else does it do, y'all? It provides a home to all of the predator bugs that are gonna go after the bugs I don't want, you dig? That's why we want a fair amount of nitrogen fixing. Shrubs, ground cover, trees. We try to interplant instead of just doing what most orchards would do where it's beneficial tree, beneficial tree, beneficial tree, and then you got to spray like crazy. That's why we throw these nitrogen fixers in as often as we can and in as, in as many places as we can, trying to replicate all seven layers of a forest when we do this. Because the beneficial bugs that this provides a home for is going to put the if there is a problem, if, if there is a disease, if there is a bug that wants, let's say, this peach over here, well, I got allies in here to help me protect it. How cool is that, y'all? You know, it's, it, this is just one of many, many, many things out there. We use mimosa in much the same way. Now, when it comes to chopping and dropping, it doesn't work so well with a black locust, at least around your trees, because it's never gonna break down, or at least it's gonna take a long time to break down. So ideally, when it comes to working within the mulch ring, we try to use something like a mimosa that I know is gonna break down and still we can also coppice it. Folks, this is the beauty of permaculture. This is why I go to bed at night thinking about this stuff. There is, if it was just jumping out there and doing what everybody else does, I'm not gonna find any interest in that because this is a way of working with nature and having nature work with me. Trying to figure out asking, like Paul Gauchy says, go out there, look at nature and say, okay, what are you doing? Because I want to copy it. That's exactly what I'm learning to retrain my brain to do. And that's what we should all be trying to do, folks, because it can make life so much easier for you. So hopefully you learn some of the benefits and the virtues of this wonderful plant. And I've only, only scratched the surface. So with that said, I got a few more to put out here. Till next time, this is Billy. The Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture, is my passion. Right here's the reasons why. We'll see y'all next time.